I've taken the time to study the all 22 coaches film from the Buffalo Bills week four loss to the Baltimore Ravens. And I'm sharing my top takeaways with you today on Locked on Bills. You are locked on Bills, your daily Buffalo Bills podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bills Mafia? It's Joe Marino, author of Go Bills and Buffalo's Run, also the co-host of the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast, and I'm your host of Locked On Bills. want to thank you for making Locked On Bills your first listen every day, and a big welcome and shout out to our everydayers. You know who you are. Those of you who never miss a single episode, I appreciate y'all being here very, very much. I'd also like to invite you to subscribe or follow for free on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Well, folks, welcome in. I'm very excited to break down this game for you. I've had a chance to study the tape and um, have a lot to say about what I saw in this Bills loss to the Baltimore Ravens. And I want to say thank you for being here. You know, I know it's not everyone's favorite thing to do to hear about the Bills doing a bunch of bad things. And um, it's not fun, right? It's more, more fun when we talk about the Bills lighting up the Jaguars and the Dolphins and all the fun things that went into that. Well, I will say, though, that our most meaningful conversations come after a loss. And so I'm glad you're here. And it's been interesting kind of observing, you know, the Bills' first loss of the year and just the discourse that comes from that. And it's like everyone's got a a, a finger to point at something, what, whatever it is. I, I've seen Curtis Samuel, Dawson Knox, Austin Johnson. It's like, what are we doing? The answers are always in the tape. And it's very therapeutic for me to spend the day after Bill's games in the film because I get the answers. And so you're here, you're going to get the answers as well. And so you can stop the chaotic conversations. You can know exactly what happened. And let's start with the defensive side of the football. We'll do what we do here. We'll talk defense first. We'll get into snap counts, studs and duds, all the things. But we got to start with the defense because I think this is where the game was really lost. And I'll start by saying something good. This is going to be weird because I don't have a lot of good to say, but in a game where I went into this thing and I brought up all the questions about how the Bills were going to match up and deal with Baltimore, one of my main questions was, can you adjust with your coverage shells? Because the Bills have been very heavy, too high, middle of the field, open coverage. And Lamar likes to throw the ball to the middle of the field. He's very good at throwing the ball to the middle of the field. And I thought the Bills needed to embrace more one high middle of the field close coverage. They were 65-35 in weeks one through three, skewed towards two high middle of the field open. In this game, they went 50-50. Congratulations, you did a great job of playing some different coverage looks against the offense that I thought you should play some different coverage looks against. So good job there. Really bad job with the run defense and the game plan there. Really bad, which is disappointing because you knew that's what Baltimore was going to do. They just came off of 270-something yards against Dallas. They signed Derrick Henry to go with Lamar Jackson. They're going to run the football on you, and that's where the biggest problems were for the Bills. And it's pretty unreal to me the strategy that the Bills thought would work in this game. And I'm sure a big part of this equation was they thought they were going to be better on offense and score more points. I did too. But your plan for defending this Baltimore rushing offense is flat out egregious. Entering this game, we talked about this. These are metrics that Sean McDermott and Bobby Babich have. They have these numbers. These aren't hard to get. Entering this game, Baltimore ran the ball 77% of the time out of heavy personnel, meaning either two backs or two tight ends on the field. And this was a major concern of mine because the Bills do not match personnel. They don't. They are who they are. They are going to give you nickel and dime defense, five and six defensive backs on the field. Now, they did play some four line, some three linebacker stuff against Baltimore. Didn't work. But that's only part of the issue. The bigger issue is box counts. 
Baltimore ran the ball against Buffalo 82% of the time out of heavy personnel, meaning two or three backs, excuse me, two backs or two tight ends on the field. And the Bills, I, I can't believe I'm saying this, the Bills gave Baltimore light boxes, meaning six or less players in the box on 41.2% of rushing snaps. What? Come on, I mean, running the football is about box counts and having them advantageous for you. They're playing heavy personnel, and they got Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson, and you're giving them 41.2% light boxes. You can't win with that. You went neutral box, meaning seven players in the box 50% of the time, and you went heavy boxes, which is eight or more defenders in the box, 8.8% of the time. What? Now, look, it's not rare for the Bills to do this. This is who they are. This is who they've been under McDermott. But if there ever was a time to be willing to stack the box, it was Sunday night against Baltimore. You got to dare Lamar Jackson to beat you throwing the ball down the field. One of eight on throws 20 yards or more down the field entering this game. They have the best rushing offense in the NFL with two unicorns back there and Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson. You're undermanned on defense, especially if you want to fit the run out of nickel. Doing so with Taron Johnson is a different ballgame than doing so, with Cam, doing so with Cam Lewis. Oh, by the way, you trailed by two or more scores for literally 75% of the game, and you were only willing to play heavy box counts 8.8% of the time. And I'm sure a couple of those were goal line situations where you kind of had to. It's absolutely insane to me. Like, this just doesn't add up. In the world of football 101, doesn't add up. So you are who you are. And, like, I can respect to some extent, hey, this is how we play. This is the the team that we are. But under these circumstances, with an offense that can't throw the ball down the field, with Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson that's coming off of a huge rushing output that has the best rushing offense in the NFL when you're undermanned on defense, particularly with your second-level defenders, and you you trailed for two scores or more for 75% of the game, You sat there and didn't do anything to load up on the box and make it harder for them to run the football? Boy, boy, that's bad coaching. That's bad coaching. And that's just the beginning of it. So structurally, the Bills are at a major disadvantage with how they chose to play the game. But then the Ravens just made them pay over and over and over again. Todd Monken, the Ravens' offensive coordinator's ran circles around the Bills' defensive coaching staff. The Bills, well understood, they're a penetration-style defense. What do I mean by that? They like an up-the-field defense, defensive linemen getting up the field, wreaking havoc, causing penetration, and the Ravens knew that, and they destroyed it with wham blocks. They said, Ed Oliver, you like to penetrate and get up the field? Good. Good. We like that you like to do that. We're going to go ahead and let you do that, and sometimes we're not even going to block you. And you're going to get well acquainted with Patrick Ricard on wham blocks. And they did it over and over, over and over. And then then eventually it stopped being Ed Oliver, Dwayne Smoot sometimes, Daquan Jones sometimes. Point being, they took the Bills' style of play and made them pay for it. They knew exactly how it was vulnerable, and they exploited it over and over again. And the Bills just had no answers. Like at some point, you got to self scout and know what your deficiencies and issues are on defense. And you got to be ready for the different ways that a team can exploit that. Like you make a calculated choice to play defense with these light boxes, with light personnel. Give your players a chance. And again, the Bills live in this world, and sometimes it blows up in their face, right? Every once in a while, it blows up in their face. But come on, like you can't make it this easy on Baltimore. Not with that offense and how they're built to play football. It's just insane to me. 
So then, right, they're getting these wham blocks going. They're inviting up the field penetration, and then they just start baking in play fakes. And my goodness, Dorian Williams, Balen Spector, Cam Lewis twisted up over and over again. So they're manipulating them with play fakes while inviting up the field penetration with wham blocks, and they are just doing what they want. Like I said, Baltimore's offensive staff ran circles around the Bills' defensive staff. So, yeah. There's a part of me that would love to say, I'm disappointed in that, Oliver. I'm disappointed in Daquan Johns- Jones. I would like for Balen Specter to be better or Cam Lewis to be better. But what a tough spot to be in, in terms of the positions that your coaching staff puts you in to try to compete in that type of a game on the road. Are you kidding me? Baltimore runs the ball 34 times for 271 yards, eight yards per carry. You knew that. How about these numbers? Baltimore averaged 5.57 yards before contact per rush. 5.57 yards before contact on average before somebody touched the ball carrier. What? 41% light boxes? What are we doing? They only averaged two and a half yards after contact. With all due respect to Derrick Henry, who's been the best running back in the NFL for a long time, Hall of Fame type running back. You didn't even make him be special. Like, I'm not taking anything away from Derrick Henry, but his two longest runs, who wouldn't have gotten the same amount of yards? Make him be special. Put a bunch of guys in the box and say, hey, if you're going to be productive, you're going to plow through a bunch of dudes. 5.57 yards before contact? What? I mean, this is terrible defensive coaching. This is terrible. And I get it. Like, Baltimore is one of one. No other team can stress you like Baltimore with how they run the football. But that's the whole point. They're one of one. Play differently. I'm stunned. I am stunned by what I watched. It was my fears. I talked about this. I said, yeah, this doesn't add up. But boy, the Bills had, I mean, and that's what I said. I said, look, that's Sean McDermott and Bobby Babbage got to figure this out because they got problems. And I know part of that equation was that you were going to score points. And that blew up in your face. But I mean, that's borderline malpractice. Not putting dudes in positions to be successful. And, and to the credit of Bobby Babbage, and and Joe Brady, you listen to their press conferences on Monday, and they were very accountable, very accountable. But this wasn't this wasn't hard to anticipate. This wasn't hard to anticipate. You put it on a platter for them, and they ate big time. Defensive snap counts: uh, the Bills played fifty-seven snaps of defense on the edge. Greg Rousseau forty-one snaps. Dewan Smoot twenty-seven. AJ Epinesa twenty-four. Casey Tuhill, 16, Von Miller, 9, Javon Solomon, 3. I know that to some, maybe Von Miller playing nine snaps is eye-opening. Not really. I mean, that wasn't the game script where you would play a bunch of Von Miller. So I get it. There's no sense in asking Von Miller to go out there and, you know, set the edge against wham blocks. And it's not, that wasn't a game for him. I have no issues with him playing nine snaps. A defensive tackle, again, 57 snaps at Oliver, 41. Daquan Jones, 36. Dwayne Carter, 26. Austin Johnson, 7. I think that's interesting that Austin Johnson uh, was outsnapped by Dwayne Carter by that many snaps, by 19 snaps. That's notable to me. At linebacker, Balen Spector, 55. Dorian Williams, 49. Nicholas Morrow, 16. Joe Andreessen, 3. At corner, Christian Benford, 56. Rasul Douglas, 53. Kyrie Elam, 3. Cam Lewis, 41. Jamarcus Ingram, 7. At safety, DeMar Hamlin, 57, Cole Bishop, 41, Taylor Rapp, 16. I know that everyone's going to be interested in the safeties. I I think this goes hand in hand. Like when you're giving them light boxes and they're getting so much yards before contact and you can't fit the run, like it, it goes all the way back to your safeties. You're not putting them in good positions to be able to make tackles either. So yeah, was Hamlin, could Hamlin have been better? Sure. Could Bishop have been better? Could Rapp have been better on his snaps? Yeah, no doubt about it. But again, like it starts with the front, and I don't think anybody was in position to be successful. Um, you know, you got guys that are untouched 
for for almost six yards on average. I mean, you're not going to be in a good position to square those guys up. So yeah, were the safeties bad? Sure. Were they in position to not be bad? No, I don't think they were. It all plays together, folks. So that's the defense. <laughs> Let's talk about the offense on the other side of it, folks. Be sure to stick with me. Hey, NFL fans, you could start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live, play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Folks, I'm sure you want to get to some games. Maybe it's a Bills game, maybe a Sabres game, maybe a concert, comedy, whatever it is. You got to get your tickets through Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to purchase tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. The app is awesome. It's easy to navigate. They give you flash deals. They give you a seat view. They give you their best price guarantee. You can turn on all-in pricing. Plus, they specialize in last-minute tickets. So maybe you don't know if you're going to be able to get to that concert in April. Well, you don't have to worry about it because Game Time has great deals on tickets right up until the day of the event. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL. That's L O C K E D O N NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. Let's talk about the offense, folks. I think the offense was in some conflict. Um, they never really seized momentum, right? I think that's what I keep coming back to with the offense. They had their moments, but whether it was the Kincaid drop on third down, the Coleman drop, the ridiculous trick play, some cowardly punts, never really able to seize momentum in the game. One comment on the Kincaid drop, you go back and watch that play. The primary read is a little flat route to Shakir, which was open. Josh Allen said no. His eyes go back to the middle of the field. Don Kincaid uncovers very quickly. Quick throw over the middle of the field. He's not anyone near him. Josh Allen clutches like he's going to throw it. He clutches. Kincaid continues. It's a second window throw now, and the throw's a little wide, and it's a tough catch for Kincaid. I think, I know we never want to say anything bad about Josh Allen. I think he did the best he could in this game under the circumstances, but for that particular play, he should have thrown it to Shakir, and then he should have thrown it to Kincaid in the first window, and then he it got frenetic, and it wound up not working on the second window throw. So just couldn't seize momentum. But I, I think what it really came down to um, was Joe Brady. And again, I thought he was very accountable in his post game. He talked about the trick play. Uh, said it was a terrible call. There's, I mean, he, even, he said all the things that I've said about it. Like even like the process was just bad. There's just not, there was, was not a good time to call. It. It, it just was, and it's not defensible. And, and to everyone's credit with the bills, they've treated it as such, like just a bad play call. But also Joe Brady said something that I think is very important. He said he made it a drop back passing game. And when it's straight drop back passing, it's hard. It's hard for any quarterback. Even Josh Allen, even Patrick Mahomes, it's hard. And because it's a true drop-back passing game, you stress out your pass protection. And the pass protection was not good in this game. I thought the Ravens toyed with the Bills up front. You had some communication issues once again. And it's not like the Ravens were blitzing. They blitzed 25%, which is a pretty normal rate. But the threat of pressure matter just as much as someone actually creating pressure or dialing up an actual pressure look. Up front, the Bills just had some issues. I mean, there were times where they had numbers in pass protection. They had five over four, and they couldn't get the right exchanges. You have situations where guys are passing up an inside runner to fan out to the right. It's like, no, you got to protect the inside gap. Saw issues. And then as the Bills had issues, in pass protection, now you start dialing up seven-man blocking surfaces. Well, if you have seven-man blocking surfaces, guess what? You have less eligible receivers. So you can have five eligible receivers on any given play. When you keep two in the block, you've only got three. And they're dropping six. They're dropping five in coverage. You got five over three or, you know, numbers are just not good. 
because you couldn't get your protection stuff figured out. And then a lot of the Bills' protection schemes, the plan is, okay, we know there's going to be free runners. Josh Allen can deal with that. Well, didn't doesn't always work that way. Doesn't always work that way. You saw some bad L's for the offensive line. I mean, Spencer Brown, great season to this point. Kyle Van Noy ate his lunch. I mean, two quick L's Spencer took against Kyle Van Noy. Good rush moves by Van Noy. It's not like these are cheap losses. Like, he won the reps. They're good wins. But still L's nonetheless for Spencer Brown. David Edwards takes a big-time L against Travis Jones, who ends up being a hold. And he's got MVS open on a corner route. And Josh can't get to it because of the protection. Osiris Torrance takes a couple L's in this game. And I think, again, the commu- some of the communication stuff, I, I continue to go back to him, is-, is the problem there. So, yeah, you had protection issues. Your play call sequencing was not very good. You're, you you got into an unfavorable game script. And, you know, I think there was a, probably too much of an abandonment of what the Bills wanted to do. I know the game got away pretty quick. But you were still looking at multiple opportunities to get it to a one-score game despite being down. I thought the Bills kind of maybe got away from what they wanted to be quicker than they should have. And I'll say this. Dalton Kincaid, there's still a lot of gravity that he pulls. I mean, there's a lot of reps that I'm looking at where he gets into a route and you can just see the defense just sucks towards him, right? And he still was pretty productive in this game, but you got to be mindful of that. And I think Keon Coleman winning those two back shoulders later in the game, those are very important. As that can become more consistent for the Bills and defenses have to respect that, I think it's going to open up even more things. And I think the more of those types of things that can happen, like Keon becoming that player and Shakir being who he is and Kincaid being who he is, and then as you start to get wins in other ways, you know I think you're going to be able to be a more complete passing offense. But it, it's I think this was a game where you saw some of the worst of what you feared it could be. And again, I think a lot of it's not necessarily, hey, I don't think you have issues with guys uncovering or guys not being available. I think you had too much conflict with how you were going to protect who has to stay in And they have numbers and coverage, and there's nowhere to go with the ball. Meanwhile, you're getting quick pressure. It's like a bad recipe. And so how do you soften that up a little bit? Well, I think you hit 50-50 balls to Keon Coleman on the perimeter. That's a good start. I think your quick game and yards after catch is a good start. So you have some good ingredients, but I think if what you probably feared the Bills' passing offense could be this year manifested itself against Baltimore. Offensive snap counts, 59 snaps for the Bills on offense. Quarterbacks, Josh Allen, 51. Mitch Trubisky, 8. At running back, James Cook, 33. Ty Johnson, 11. Ray Davis, 10. Reggie Gilliam, 5. And again, the run run, uh, design is so interesting. If I'm not mistaken, it was nine zone runs for James Cook versus one gap. And I think for Ray Davis, it was like five gap runs in one zone. So there's like a very clear understanding of the different run styles of those two backs at tight end Dalton Kincaid 37 Dawson Knox 27 Q Morris 8 Alec Anderson only three snaps and I think that's an underrated storyline you know the Bills had that Connor McGovern situation where he had to leave uh, and then come back and then leave again and then come back you know I think that jumbo tight end role is important structurally for how they want to play offense and uh, Anderson kind of being pulled away from that for a little bit of time hurt at wide receiver Keon Coleman, 43 snaps, Mac Hollins, 36, Khalil Shakir, 35, MVS, 25, Curtis Samuel, 22 offensive line, uh, Torrance and Brown play all 59 snaps, Edwards and Dawkins, 51 McGovern, 43 snaps, Anderson, 16, Cedric Van Pran Granger and Ryan Vandebark, eight studs and duds. I don't have any studs. I'm sorry. You lost 35 to 10. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't find one guy that I thought was, hey, you know what? This person played highly impactful winning football that deserved to be a stud. So sorry, no studs this week. We got some duds. And we'll start our duds with the clear top three duds. Their names are Sean McDermott, Bobby Babich, and Joe Brady. In a tier of their own in terms of duds. Then we can get to some of the players who I think, again, not put in great positions to be successful. And I I even feel bad about it. Cam Lewis and Balin Spector. I thought they were particularly bad. I thought Dorian Williams was a lot better than either of those two. Like, I don't, Dorian Williams had his blunders, not to the degree of putting him down as a dud. 
Ed Oliver, Daquan Jones had to be better in this game. Spencer Brown, Osiris Torrance. Those are your duds. So Brady, McDermott, Babich, Lewis, Specter, Oliver, Jones, Brown, Torrance. I mean, I guess Tyler Bass for missing the field goal. Could have made it a two-possession game. He kept it a three-possession game. I don't know. It's pretty inconsequential in the grand scheme of the game. But just a just a bad night for the Bills. And again, like I said at the end of yesterday's episode, like can we let's bring this back. Let's ground ourselves. The Bills are three and one. They're on pace to win 12 games. It's a one-off game against a tough opponent that you match up very poorly with. Short week on the road against an AFC contender. Like it's not a good recipe. So leave it for what it is. We've I've done the thing now. I gave you my instant reaction. I wrote an article and I've done the all 22 review. We'll do herd mentality next, and I'm sure we'll have some more questions, but uh, it's onward. I think the Bills, the next six games, I think they should win at least four of them. At least four. You're sitting at seven and three through ten games. Like, it's going to be okay. But there's a lot to learn from this game. And and surely the Bills' defense is going to be stressed with this. And these issues showed up against Miami. The game script never really favored Miami. And I thought Miami had their own play call issues on offense that didn't position them well to take advantage of some of the things that they were exposing to the Bills' light boxes. And when you score points, it matters. Like, you score those points, and you put the other team in chase mode, and you can play the game you want to play, and they can't play the game they want to play. matters a lot. And I think for the last three weeks, Miami, Jacksonville, Baltimore, you've seen exactly what I mean by that. All right, let's move on. We're on the herd mentality. We're on to the Houston Texans. As always, I kindly ask that you share, subscribe, rate, and review this podcast. Have a great rest of your day. Go Bills. And I look forward to catching up with you again real soon.